Remembering the previous tutorial in this series, we used the pipe draft plugin for SketchUp to define the route for a control valve station near the steam condensate outlet of the reboiler. In this tutorial, we're going to demonstrate how to use pipe draft to complete the pipeline by detailing all the valves and fittings using our CS150 pipe specification. Before editing an existing pipeline, it's always a good practice to select a fitting component that matches the spec size, and hierarchy group ownership of what we'll be working on. For example, if we select one of the 4-inch elbows or pipe segments, the size and spec of the component is reflected in the properties grid of the pipe draft pallet. If we click one of the 3-inch components, the size and spec is shown likewise. Since we want to get started by trimming out the 4-inch pipe connection at the reboiler nozzle, we'll select one of the adjacent 4-inch piping components by pressing the space bar and clicking one of them. That simple action tells pipe draft the size, spec, and group ownership of the fittings we'll be inserting, and it loads the matching components into the pallet. It's important to understand that when we insert piping components, pipe draft detects the nature of the piping component we click. If we click a fixed length fitting, pipe draft will attempt to connect and orient the inserted component using the nearest matching virtual connect points. If the component we click is a pipe segment, then pipe draft will either split or nibble away the segment to accommodate the length of the inserted component. To trim out our pipe's connection at the reboiler nozzle, we'll need to insert a gasket and a flange. In addition, the PNID specifies the need for a spectacle blind near that nozzle, so we'll add a few more flanges and gaskets to accommodate that as well. Open the flanges and gaskets section of the pipe draft palette to display the choices available in this size and spec. Click the gasket choice in the palette that is rated at 150 pounds. Then click a position that is close to the end of the vertical pipe segment near the reboiler nozzle. We want pipe draft to nibble away the pipe segment to make room for the gasket, which will also position it at the face of the reboiler nozzle. Click the weld neck flange choice in the palette, then click a position on the vertical pipe that is close to the end of the pipe segment near the gasket. We want pipe draft to nibble away the pipe segment to make room for the flange, which will also position it at the face of the gasket. Now we'll need another pair of flanges and gaskets to host our spectacle blind. Since we have not pressed the escape key yet, the pipe draft insertion tool is still active with our previous flange choice. So click the vertical pipe segment close to the end near the flange. Notice that we need to reorient the second flange so that the weld ends are aligned back to back. Simply press the left or right arrow key to flip the fitting component end for end. Before inserting the spectacle blind, we'll need to fetch another gasket from the pipe draft palette using the same techniques. Scroll the pallet down to and open the miscellaneous section of the pipe draft pallet to display the choices available in this size and spec. Click the spectacle blind choice in the pallet, then click a position near the end of the vertical pipe segment that is close to the gasket. Now we'll insert another gasket and flange. Next, we'll move along to the flow control valve station.
we need to insert a flanged gate valve near this elbow in the vertical pipe segment surrounded by gaskets and flanges. We'd like to have the initial flange fitting tight to the elbow, so we'll use the same component insertion techniques we used earlier. Open the valves and actuators section of the pipe draft palette to display the choices available in this size and spec. Click the gate valve choice in the palette, then click a position on the vertical pipe segment near the gasket. While the valve is still active and selected, we can easily adjust its orientation by pressing the up arrow or down arrow key to quickly rotate the fitting around its primary center line. Now we'll insert another typical gasket and flange. Next, we'll work on the horizontal side of the elbow. The PNID specifies the need for a 3 inch nominal diameter globe valve here, so we'll need to surround it with 4x3 inch reducers. But first, we'll need to delete the 4 inch horizontal pipe segment to open up some workspace for assembling the 3 inch fitting components. Press the spacebar, click the horizontal pipe segment, and delete it. Open the reducer section of the pipe draft palette. Click the 4x3 concentric choice. Then click a position on the elbow close to the horizontal end. Press the escape key to close the insertion tool. Now we can demonstrate an alternate method of component insertion. In cases like this where the components are fitting tight, it can be more convenient to insert fitting components without an underlying pipe segment. Before we proceed, we need to ensure the pipe draft palette contains 3 inch component choices for the CS150 spec rather than the 4 inch components we've been working with so far. To do that, we could temporarily change the nominal diameter of the pipe group owner to 3 inches, but since we already have a few 3 inch diameter components in sight that are of the correct size spec and group owner, we can simply select one of them using the space bar and clicking one. This simple step tells Pipedraft to display the component attribute values in the properties section of the palette and loads the matching choices in all the fitting selection sections of the palette. Now we're ready to begin inserting 3 inch nominal diameter fitting components. Open the flanges and gaskets section of the pipe draft palette. Click the weld neck flange choice in the palette, then click a position near the small end of the reducer component. Click the gasket choice in the palette that is rated at 150 pounds, then click a position on the face of the flange. Open the valves and actuators section of the pipe draft palette. Click the globe valve choice in the palette, then click a position on the face of the gasket. Press the up arrow or down arrow key if necessary to quickly rotate the valve around its primary center line. Now we'll insert another gasket and flange using the same techniques. Next, we need to insert another 4x3 inch reducer. Since the reducer we need is located in the pallet with all the other 4 inch fittings, we'll need to load them by selecting one of the fittings in sight that are of the same size, spec, and group ownership. Open the reducers section of the pallet. Click the 4x3 concentric choice. Then click a position near the weld neck end of the flange. Next, we need to insert another 4 inch flange gate valve surrounded by gaskets and flanges. 
Since we already have an assembly like this within sight of the correct size, spec, and group ownership, we can save ourselves a little time by using SketchUp's built-in copy and paste commands. However, instead of using SketchUp's move or rotate commands, we'll use PipeDraft's transform components command to quickly relocate and reorient the assembly with just two clicks using the virtual connect points found in every pipe draft fitting component. To copy the assembly, use a SketchUp selection window to select the components by pressing the space bar and draw a selection window from left to right around the gate valve, gaskets, and flanges. Use SketchUp's copy command, then the paste command. Temporarily position the copied assembly to an open location in the model, then press the escape key to close the paste tool. To relocate and reorient the copied assembly, while it's still selected, click the Transform Components command located under the Tools section of the pipe draft palette. Click a position near the weld neck end of the copied assembly. Then click a position near the large end of the reducer. Press the up arrow or down arrow key if necessary to quickly rotate the entire assembly around the center line. Press the escape key to close the transform tool. Next, we need to replace the missing 4 inch pipe segment between the flange and the 4 by 3 inch T. Click the route pipe command located under the Tools section of the palette. Click a position near the open port on the T and click a position near the weld neck end of the flange. Press the Escape key to close the router tool. Next, we need to insert another 3-inch flange globe valve on the reducing leg side of the T. We'll use the same copy, paste, and transform techniques we used earlier, but first we need to remove the existing vertical pipe segment. Press the space bar, click the pipe segment, and delete it. Now, we'll proceed to copy the first globe valve assembly. There is one change we need to make to our first globe valve. The pin ID specifies it needs to be a diaphragm actuated control valve tagged with the label FRC-408. Open the valves and actuator section of the pallet. Find and click the diaphragm actuator choice. Click the first globe valve, then press the escape key to close the insertion tool. Notice that PipeDraft has removed the hand wheel from the globe valve and replaced it with a diaphragm actuator. Click the Tag Name field located under the Properties section of the pallet and enter the label for this control valve. That completes this tutorial. To recap, we use the pipe draft plugin for SketchUp to completely trim out all the valve and fitting details of the flow control valve station for the reboiler using the CS150 carbon steel pipe specification. Please join us for our next tutorial where we'll optimize the layout of this control valve station to minimize construction costs and its impact on plant and maintenance operations. Thanks for watching.